The Battle of Zuolu was the second battle in the history of China as recorded in the records of the Grand Historian, fought between the Yanwang tribes led by the legendary Yellow Emperor and the Juli tribes led by Chiayu. The battle was fought in Zuolu, near the present-day border of Hebei and Shanxi. The victory for the Yellow Emperor here is often credited as history, although almost everything from that time period is considered legendary. Traditional Chinese historiography places the battle in the 26th century BC, although the Xiaoshangzhou chronology project has suggested the traditional dates to be at least some two centuries too early for the most remote recorded periods. Chapter 1 Background In prehistoric China, the tribes of Yellow Emperor rose to power on the plains of Guanzhong and merged with Yan Emperor's tribes following the Battle of Bangquan. The Yanwang tribes, as the merged tribes were known, spread along the Yellow River towards the East China Sea. The Juli tribes, led by Chiayu, had developed near the present-day borders of Shandong, Hebei, and Henan, and expanded towards the West. The Yanwang and Juli tribes were in conflict over the fertile land in the Yellow River Valley, and thus they fought in the plains of Zuolu. Chiyu's tribes were fierce in war and skilled at making weapons, allying themselves with the Kuofu tribe and the Sanmao tribe, they first attacked the Yen Emperor's tribe, driving them into the lands of the Yellow Emperor. The Yellow Emperor was angered by this, and went to war with Chi Yu. Chapter 2 the battle. The details of the battle are mostly seen as mythical by historians, but if such a battle did occur, these are the events said to have happened. It was said that Qi Yu led 72 to 81 tribes against the Yanwang tribes in a thick fog. The Yellow Emperor sent tribes under the totems of the bear, Pai, wolf, leopard, and others in retaliation, but due to the fog, they initially suffered several defeats. To counter the fog, the Yellow Emperor brought forth the south-pointing chariot, a geared mechanism able to point in one constant direction designed by himself and built for him by the craftsman Fang Bo. In addition, the Zanyu tribe helped the Yanwang forces by blowing horns and hitting drums, thus frightening the enemy. The Yanwang forces were ultimately victorious, killing Chi Yu in Hebei. Chapter 3 Aftermath after the battle, the Yellow Emperor built his capital in Zuolu, and established the agricultural confederacy that later came to be known as the Huoxia civilization, which would evolve into the Han Chinese nation. The Yellow Emperor and the Yen Emperor were often credited for allowing the Chinese civilization to thrive due to the battle, and many Chinese people call themselves descendants of Yen and Huang to this day. Because of his ferocity in battle, Qi Yu was also worshipped as a war deity in ancient China. According to the records of the Grand Historian, Qin Shi Huang worshipped Qi Yu as the god of war, and Lu Bang worshipped at Qi Yu's shrine before his decisive battle against Xiang Yu. In modern China, the Hall of the Three Grand Ancestors built in Xinxiang is dedicated to Huang Di, Yan Dai and Qi Yu who are collectively revered as the founding ancestors of the Chinese nation. The Juli tribes that didn't submit to the rule of Yellow Emperor, however, were chased out of the central region of China, and split into two smaller splinter groups, the Miao and the Li. The Miao moved southwest and the Li moved southeast, as the victorious Hoxia race expanded southwards. During the course of Chinese history, the Miao and the Li were regarded as barbarians by the increasingly technologically and culturally advanced Han Chinese. Some fragments of these groups were assimilated into the Chinese during the Zhou dynasty. Yet, in other versions of the post Juli migration, the people of Juli fragmented in three different directions. It is said Qi Yu had three sons, and after the fall of Juli, his eldest son led some people south, his middle son led some people north, and his youngest son remained in Zuolu and was assimilated into the Huoxia culture. Those who were led to the south established the Sanmao nation. Perhaps on account of this splitting into multiple groups, many Far Eastern peoples regard Qi Yu as their ancestor, and by the same token, many question the ethnicity of Qi Yu as exclusively Hmong or otherwise. Some Koreans who believe Huan and Gogi as an authentic text claim Qi Yu is an ancestor of Koreans, however, 
Popular mainstream studies of Korea believe that Chi Yu has no connection to Koreans. Chapter 4 Mythology According to the Chinese mythological account classic of mountains and seas, Chiayu, with the giants, duly tribes and evil spirits, rebelled against the Yellow Emperor at Zwolu Plains. Both sides used magical powers, but Chi Yu had the advantage of forged swords and halberds. Using his powers, Chiyu covered the battlefield in thick fog. Only with the help of a magical compass chariot could the Yellow Emperor's troops find their way through the mist. He also used his daughter, Nuba, the drought demon, to harm Chiyu's troops. Later on, Chiyu suffered more defeats and was captured. Only Yinglong, the winged dragon, being a brave servant of the Yellow Emperor, dared to slay him. Chi Yu's chains were transformed into oaks, while Yinglong was cursed to remain on earth forever. Chapter 5 Notes <laughs>